Welcome everyone to this Force Friday. Uh, we have, as always, a very exciting and hopefully educational uh, session for you. Uh, today we're going to talk about drawing, of course, and one of its many uses, which is to solve problems. Uh, this may surprise some of you, and some of you might be like, oh yeah, of course, uh, you know, drawing is to solve problems. But typically we think about drawing, I think we typically think about drawing as a way of creating drawings, right? Creating illustrations, um, hopefully trying to get our ideas down on paper, right? Um, but it's more than that, you know, and I think that Swanley Maturnja and I want to share that with you today. And that this is actually a very important skill, again, for, uh, for work, for those of you that are interested in jobs in an art field. Uh, this is crucial. It's crucial to understanding that this is another language, that line is language. Um, sorry, I'm getting distracted by Maturnja, which you guys can't see. What are you doing? Looking at your hand? <laughs> I was drawing some hands for this, so I was like, you know, <laughs> I thought I was the only weird one that did stuff like that. <laughs> you know, I did um, more stuff than you. Yeah, so, <laughs> <laughs> so um, you know, so you know how important the idea of drawing um, to understand, right? To, or drawing to solve problems, and we want to prove to you that. This has been around for thousands of years, by the way, also. This is not a new idea that we're presenting. This is an age old thing, right? So I'm gonna, I'll, I'll head this up with the lesson today. We're gonna each demo for you a little bit just to prove how this could potentially work. And hopefully you find uh, other ways yourself, right? Of, of doing so, okay? All right, so with all that um, aside, um, let's say hello to our other force instructors. How's it going, uh, Swenley? Yeah, good. Another exciting topic today that uh, hopefully will help uh, you guys out there, you know, get the pressure off of having to make a great drawing and being frustrated with it. Yeah. So uh, look forward to it. Or a beautiful drawing, right? I'm, I'm sticking a word in there for you with the word great, you know, like I have to create beauty, beauty, beauty all the time. And it's that's... Mm -hmm. That's one service that the act of drawing could provide, but we want to talk about this whole other thing, right? Yeah. How about you, Martin Jay? How's it going? Yeah, I'm doing good. You know, it's like, uh, so today's topic is all about solving problems. <laughs> and I think uh, that's why we are surviving this uh, drawing to solve the problems, you know? <laughs> so I think, uh, I think most of the great art has come all the way by this method, you know, just like trying to solve some problems and beauty, you know, beauty is actually coming from that same uh, final like process. So yeah, it's going to be exciting to talk about it today. Yeah, I, again, I would interject with, I think both of those stages are beautiful all in themselves, right? Drawings that are showing the process and showing how problems are being solved. Those in themselves are drawings. And then the end result, which could be anything when we're going to talk about that today um, is also a, a, a thing of beauty all on its own, right? And I think I want to share that with you, you know, for you guys to understand um, the, the, the process drawings themselves are beautiful, you know? Um, yeah, and to understand how that works, how that looks, and and that it is another language. I know I bring this up very often, but I really want you guys to understand that you drawing, you using line to create visuals is language. You know, look at the hieroglyphs, right? Hieroglyphs are a great example, right? They're images that are being used to tell story, right? So. Think about signs that you look at on a day-to-day -day basis that have a visual on them besides text, right? That have a visual. They are there as a picture to give you a warning or give you information, right? And our brain, the human mind is really great at just assessing um, an icon, a stamp uh, very quickly in order to uh, retrieve info. In a way that's actually faster than reading, right? Because you know, there's the old adage of a picture is worth a thousand words. And in that sense, you know, you could have a picture that takes up a sentence or two and it's all in one image, right? So it could be a much faster way of defining something, right? All right, so let's get to it. 
Uh, let's get over here to Photoshop. So solving problems through drawings, right? Um, two things before we get started. Number one, again, if you like the videos that we put on to this force channel, then please hit the subscribe button. And if you wanna stay notified, hit the bell. Uh, if you're interested in any one of the instructors here and you wanna see our, our artwork, we all have Instagram accounts uh, that are always in the descriptions for the videos. Uh, and if you're interested in any kind of work, you know, workshops or mentorship or classes, go visit drawingforce.com. We do all teach out of that, out of that website, right? Um, and if, like you said, if you like what you're, you're watching, then please hit the like button, right? I think what we used to do is we used to give a prize away at like 150, and I'm fine with doing that. So, you know, if we can get up to 150 likes, we get up to those numbers again, that would be amazing. Uh, I'm more than happy to give away a prize for doing so, okay? Okay, so solving problems through drawing. So here, all on its own, just looking at the, um, the thumbnail, right? I put this thumbnail together with the intent of giving an overview of what we're gonna be talking about today. And you can see these are drawings. They're cool looking drawings, right? And these drawings are all serving the purpose of solving problems. None of these drawings here are really an end result to what Matunje was saying before. These are drawings in service of um, the path, the journey to something else, to becoming a final thing. But how awesome these all on their own are, right? So, and you see this across, you know, industrial design, you see this in the film industry a lot, right? Like film industry is such an art demanding um, space, right? Uh, industry, such a, a huge industry that is, that demands art, which is, you know, those of you that are interested in art jobs, most of you come to us saying like, I want to work at Disney. I want to work at Pixar. I want to work in live action film. I want to work in comics, right? To get to those end results, you know, you have to figure things out and their visual ends. So the figuring out is typically visual all on its own, right? So like I said, you can see here, uh, there's all different professions that are being presented here. Also is this, you know, which is the idea of like whiteboard meetings and problem solving through them as well. So, and I've been in tons of whiteboard meetings and I've usually been the whiteboard artist um, to basically take ideas in a room and throw them up onto a whiteboard and help a team visualize them. And they could be anything from actually drawing a character to drawing a flow chart, right? It's still visual information, okay? So let's dig into this. To me, the most famous, I would say, of individuals in this space would be Leonardo da Vinci. I bring this up in mentorship all the time. He's the guy, he's like my go-to when I try to prove out and help a student understand you are drawing to solve problems. We're drawing the figure to figure things out. I think of these Da Vinci sketchbooks because I love the combination of writing and illustration. Like, what is he talking about? What is he writing, right? He's taking notes and he's drawing. He's taking notes and he's drawing. So those two are such a power couple the idea of writing and note taking. Right now you have the chance to give even more information. Like what a great diary that is, right? It's like when I go drawing on location, I usually write like even just a few words or a sentence or two about that place, things that I can't get into the drawing. I might write something about the temperature of the day or the smell, right, of the area or the taste of something I ate, right? You see, so that coupled with the visual, which is what the drawing is doing, is really powerful, right? It's really, really powerful. I then understand, I can look at a picture and get a sense of that photograph um, and that not photograph, but that drawing. And that drawing also might have my opinion in it. It might be a cartoon, it might be a, a gag, or it could be a drawing of a hamburger, <laughs> right? Uh, so it could be whatever it, I want it to be, but coupled then with this writing, really, really powerful, right? So, and to state the obvious, you know, again, the drawing is a visual, I can go and write into my other senses, and that gives me a much broader idea, a much, a much more clear idea about what was going on, right? So, writing is really important, and guess what? In the mentorships and on the premium memberships, we have students write. Writing is actually a pretty big part of 
the process for us because I'll go back to my old um, my old line, which is your drawing is only as good as your ideas, right? It's ideas that we're talking about here, folks, right? How do you get your ideas across? So what we try to do is have you write and see if you can actually illustrate those ideas. And th those writings are specifically um, goals. They're goals for what you are trying to accomplish visually. So you're writing down the goals literally and then you are visually trying to transcend them, right? From uh, from words into pictures, okay? So we have Leonardo da Vinci, right? Uh, yeah, and just so much fun. Like, I love looking at this kind of stuff. To me, as I was saying before, this is just as beautiful as a finished piece of art. It's like, look at all these things he's thinking about. He's got little measurements and diagrams and he's got pulley systems in here, right? All kinds of interesting things to look at really intriguing. I wish I could read this, right? But go through all the process of understanding what he's going through here, right? So, um, uh, yeah. Mike, I want to add something in there. Please. So it's it's really a proof, you know, you see like Leonardo, uh, he's actually, you won't believe he's not actually famous for Mona Lisa. He is, he's quite famous for his Mona Lisa stuff, but Mona Lisa became famous in uh, 1900s, you know, not before that. Before that, like Mona, Mona Lisa was hanging among like different paintings and it, it got stolen. That's how it got more famous. So he actually survived, you know, his with his image all these 400 years, like before 1900s with his notes, right? He's famous for his notes, basically. So his studies, you know, that he did, like these sketchbooks, uh, that made him famous, you know, <laughs> that's what the thing is. So, and that's what the thing is, you know, um, like his notes uh, were, it, like important you know these were like more precious than the paintings you know that he did and uh you would think of leonardo as like great artist he's uh making like paintings all the time he actually did uh 30 of them in his whole lifetime and most of them are unfinished so <laughs> you can see how curious of the mind he is and he's always he just don't like to stay on one thing uh for a very long time he's just like very uh you know curious you know so you just want to know about the world more rather than just creating uh like years and years on just one thing like that anyway so that was just a fun fact <laughs> yeah thank you he um well to your point I, you're right he's so curious of the mind right and he um he did some sculpting as well but to your point he, a lot of his work didn't get to the end leonardo if we were to label him today he was an inventor right he was an inventor and as an inventor, he had this curious mind and he kept trying to come up with inventions. So he's dealing with uh, the physics and his understanding of physics of the world in that time. And he's drawing it, right? He's drawing to solve the problems. You know, if you could see the pictures, you're drawing the pictures, you could, the, the picture is the beginning of something that's going to become a, a thing that you create in the real world. Now, not to get too grandiose about this, but Damn, is that powerful? Think about that. Think about the idea that you're sketching something with line on a piece of paper that you are going to bring into our real world, right? A physical thing that you're going to make. Like he's going to try to make this plane. He's going to try and make this helicopter, for instance, right? And it starts with drawings. It comes from a human being and their mind and their ability to write and draw and invent as Leonardo did, and put that onto a piece of paper to create plans, right? It's information, again, solving problems, which is what we're talking about today, and then actually make that thing, right? That's how our whole world is invented. Everything around you is like that. You know, the chair I'm sitting on was illustrated, right? And then fabricated, and now I'm sitting on it, <laughs> Right, the computers that we're all using, the cup that's sitting over here, my baseball cap, the house that I live in, right? These things are drawn out, right? They're drawn out, they're designed. And in order to be designed, they've been illustrated in some way, shape, or form, and then made, right? And they become real. They become real in the real world. They become more than just a sketch, they become a usable object. And to me, that is profound. That is super profound to really wrap your head around how amazing that is, right? So Le there was Leonardo, right? Um, another famous artist in this space, of course, would be Michelangelo, right? And, you know, out of these guys, of course, came the term Renaissance man, right? 
So what does that mean? Well, that was somebody that was multidisciplinary, right? And all these guys were drawers, right? They can all draw. And who'd have thought, right, that would lead them to creating drawings, to creating paintings, um, to creating architecture, right? I mean, Michelangelo is famous not only for um, his sculptures and his paintings and his drawings, but for creating buildings, right? He was an architect as well. Like that's very rare. Nowadays, we don't do that. People don't usually go across a broad range of occupations. They usually are in one occupation and focus and become a specialist in that space, you know? So very more rare today to find sort of a Renaissance type um, artist, you know? But I, you know, I grabbed these because I just want you to see the idea of sketching out friezes and columns and sculptures and floor plans, you know, and just these rough drawings, right? Just rough drawings of Again, problem solving, you can't just sit and do it all on your head. I talk a lot in mentorship about how there's a language, you know, there's a language going on between you and the surface you're drawing on and you need to see things. And when your brain sees that thing, that gives you the opportunity to start going through this loop of, okay, I see it, I wanna change it. This doesn't work for me. That's not what I want it to look like. That's not how I want it to work. So I'm going to push this in some other way, right? It's it's action, reaction, action, reaction, action, reaction, right? You're going back and forth and back and forth, right? So you want to try to keep that, that thinking in mind. Now, what's interesting about this, here, I have one other one, is this starts across this bridge, you know, into what we specialize in, which is teaching figure drawing. So it can be something that's architectural. Here you can see that he's starting to lay out what this frieze will look like in the top of this column. He's roughing out the shape of what will become um, a relief, right? This little mini sculpture here and uh, this sort of decorative architecture all the way to the idea of drawing the figure, which really is no different. These are studies and trying to figure out, okay, what do I want this to look like? And what pose do I want the hand? It's like what Mutunje was doing before, right? It's like, here's how the hand is and what pose do I want it? What does it look like? What's the anatomy of the human body? How does this thing work? You see, right? So that starts to branch itself over to here, okay? So these are Michelangelo drawings and it's not drawn to create a beautiful drawing. He's actually drawing to do studies in service of something else. Typically for him, it'd be a painting or a sculpture, right? So you can see the subtle nuance. He's going in here, then he's zooming in. He's like, let me figure out the eyes. He's playing with the shape of the nose. Here he's trying to figure out this foot. And then I love these these sort of micro versions, right? He's diving deeper. He's like, "Ah, I really wanna look at the toe. How, you know, what's the compression of the skin, right? Like, let's look at this here, right? It's like, always ask why, like, why is he doing that? Well, he's, it looks like he's trying to figure out how the skin wraps over this, the difference of one toe coming out perspective versus the other one dropping down. You know, is there more here on the toe? It's hard to tell if he did this one first or second. He might've done the top one first, hard to say, and then went down here and realized he needs more information to draw the toe. That would be my guess. Like he went in too close, he pulled out to understand this, you know, and, was, and that is him trying to figure it out on this toe. My guess is he did the foot here first and then went up here into the corner and drew this because you could see the foot's not drawn as well here. Look at that toe, it's not so good, <laughs> right? The other ones are much better. You could see, I think he put more attention, more focus on trying to understand what was going on there, right? Okay. So the Renaissance, right? The Renaissance and understanding of that. So that brings me over finally to what we teach. We teach figure drawing, right? This is one of my students named Amy. And uh, there's lots of different tools, lots of different ways to try to get to drawing the figure. And in drawing the figure, you are trying to figure out the model, right? Now force, of course, is a huge subject for us within the world of trying to understand the figure, which is why to me, I just don't understand when someone goes into learning how to draw that it's not part of the conversation. How do you draw and not understand force, right? We're talking about 
just the fact that you're trying to draw anything means gravity is at play because it's always at play. It's always working. So you have to start thinking about how does the body work? And in the midst of all of that, there's still opportunity to, um, you know, to also figure out uh, metaphors. You might use metaphors or analogies to draw the figure. You could see here, Amy had this sort of creative blip of, oh, you know, this is so awesome. The way she's moving, it feels like a tree to me, right? Like the trunk of a tree. And she actually went and illustrated, you know, this, right? And how that combination occurs. Sometimes you might go out in nature and see something in nature that reminds you of the figure, right? And use that as an inspiration point, right? And help use that to solve something else, right? So you're drawing, pulling from, I mean, you're pulling from all different um, inspirations while you are working as an artist, right? So that's the first one. Uh, as you may know, uh, one of my tricks to drawing the figures, imagining myself really small and the models really huge. That helps me think about the idea of forces in the body and other analogies and metaphors for the figure. Uh, this one's by Amy as well. And you can see here, she basically has created a whole like ride. <laughs> right around the model. She and I talked in one session about like roller coasters and amusement park rides, right? And you can see how she's illustrating that. And here she's like, wow, going off that leg, she's like shooting up on this ramp, right? Or here is a roller coaster, right? We talk literally about roller coasters in the figure and just trying to move around the body like a ride, right? Here she's turning the figure into all these different weird contraptions and cogs and thinking about pulley systems. You see, and by the way, a lot of the objects, you know, that have been created in this world are based on human anatomy, the way the human anatomy functions, right? Where else would we go as a race than ourselves to understand ourselves as machines and how we would work and using that idea of function, the understanding of those functions, how we would bring that over to other tools. Um, to help us, right? To help us build, to help us create, right? So I love these examples and I love that she did this, you know? And all of this is in service of, right? Creating the drawings, look at that, right? Like this crazy loop to loop ramp that she's thinking about here. So I highly recommend, you know, this. I highly recommend, um, you know, doodling your way off of the figure drawing um, I recommend doing metaphorical stuff. I recommend doing zoom ins on areas. I recommend arrows and we'll show that to you today. I think arrows are really important, especially when coming to force, especially when thinking about gravity, right? An arrow is a symbol, right? It's a tool that you can use immediately in your own work to help you better understand what's going on, right? Last but not least, um, I have another student named Dalric who's working on his character design book with me right now. And he's working on a creature that's underwater. So I tasked him with this idea of why are you know, fish um, created in different shapes, right? Like, how does that happen? Why does it happen? What's the function of that? And look at this sheet he came back with, right? He came back with words and pictures, right? So we have words and pictures here. And he learned about something called viscous drag versus pressure drag, right? So viscous is the front end one. That's like the drag, the friction that happens by a fish or something going through liquid viscosity, right? It's thicker than air. How viscous is something? How dense and thick is a liquid, right? And then there's pressure drag, which comes off of the back end or eddying, right? AKA this kind of circular motion. So you can see, how would you describe this? Think about trying to describe it versus a picture. The picture is so much clearer, right? We have arrows. We can see how, what the shapes are, the directions of, of the water. What are the directions of the water compared to the shape of an object, right? What does it look like if it's round? What does it look like in here? What is calling an airfoil, right? Minimum drag, it's basically the force shape. As he said here, we got more straight to curve. You know, cars are designed this way. Boats are designed this way. Fish are designed this way, right? There's a reason that nature has been designed 
in these manners. And if you look at nature through the filter again of function, then that helps you draw, right? And it helps you draw better because you draw with a sense of understanding and that sense of understanding shows up in your work, which improves your work um, and brings more realism to it, right? It makes more sense, right? It just makes more sense. And last but not least is a square, right? Which would create a ton of drag, super high drag, as he wrote here. The other thing that, that I learned from him in, in this was there's sort of two big buckets of how fish swim, right? There's undulating and oscillating, right? So undulating might be something more like a water snake or an eel, right? It has less um, bones or none, in fact, for some it's just muscle in their body and they serpentine their way through the water uh, to move forward, right? Versus oscillating, which is what leads you more into like sharks and other fish, or here as he wrote tuna, right? Um, right, so more of the back end is what wiggles and the front end really doesn't move that much at all. It's much more stiff and rigid. And those types of fish also are more bony, right? More bony fish, right, to create that structure. And then he was saying that, you know, what is the most optimal fish? It's actually the tuna. Right, it has really low viscous drag, um, and its um, its rear fins they have these really small, rigid ones along the back end of the tail, uh, which really help it propel itself forward. It's like having little mini fins, right? So who would have thought, right? The tuna, right? So it says here the tuna is the closest living example of an optimal airfoil shape for minimizing drag. It's also strategically placed smaller fins that run along the tail end before the caudal fin to further assist in eliminating drag, right? So, so interesting. So I just want you to see, here's such an excellent example of words and pictures coming together to bring out clear information. And what Swanley Richard Jay and I want you to be aware of today is when you're drawing the figure, this is what we're doing. This is all that we're doing. We are just drawing to solve and drawing to solve and drawing to figure this out. And that leads to amazing drawings, right? It is drawings that in the end, you start to maybe drop down some of the arrows and stuff and you just go into your drawing all on its own. But it is, a drawing is a solution. And in our case, it's the solution of the human body, right? And if you stick around with us long enough, especially if it is something like mentorship or premium Membership that leads to storyboarding, that leads to character design, that leads to concept art, leads to comic book illustration, all of which are things that we actually do teach on the site as well, which we don't uh, publicly announce. But all those things are things that we go into. Okay. Whew. All right, let me catch my breath. <laughs> so um, let's see, I grabbed a picture. I have not thought about this. I have to say, I literally grabbed it right before the meeting. So let's just take a look at it together and try and just solve things, right? Let's just try and solve and recognize that through starting to try and solve, it will lead us closer and closer to, um, to the actual drawing. So I'm not gonna draw the figure per se. I kind of will, kind of won't. I'm not gonna go right for the body. I'm just gonna try to take a look at this and come up with things that I'm aware of that I wanna think about, things that are gonna help me understand this. So from a place of function, you know, to me, what's interesting about this pose is there's sort of like a giant weight that's hanging here and it gets hooked up to this like structure right here. This is, you know, and many of you have heard me use this, um, uh, this metaphor before, uh, but I picture that leg as the column, right? This is a column. These are flutes, they're called these lines in here. Um, because this column is where all the strength is, right? Strength, uh, another word here for me to think about would be support, right? It's a supporting leg. I'm using words to help me here, right? So look, I've already gone through, look at how much just happened actually, now that I look at it, right? It's like, here's an arrow, right? That was there for me to say, oh, I want weight dropping down over here. I drew a column, right? So now we're going to other images, right? I'm, I'm making comparisons from other things in my world that I've seen and experienced and touched. And I understand the use of them, right? Comparisons. I'm thinking about the strength of it. I'm also using, what are these? I'm using words. 
So we've got one, right? Two, three tools already in here, right? And there are three of the major ones I would say that I use consecutively, right, or consistently. So, and then I recognize this angle, right? So this is helping hold this up. I start thinking, oh, wait a minute. Okay, all that weight over there is in a diagonal in perspective from the column to get me to this foot. So this is holding up, right? It's a little bit more like that. And then I've got this tilt and this sweeps over here like this. There's a lot of depth going on here, right? We've got from his shoulder to his hand, like so. So that's, you know, I'm pretty big. I want that scale. So the scale in my illustration, the scale is helping. Perspective, by the way, helps, right? The more, and this is why the better you know how to draw, the better you learn how to explain yourself and your ideas because you're able to use those tools to clarify your explanation. So that line is representational of perspective, right? And this is what I call like a kickstand leg. So that's like a term I use all the time. It's like, oh, it's called a kickstand leg. Well. That's me comparing it to a bicycle kickstand because I know, you know, if I have a bicycle like this, right? And I used to have a kickstand and I used it all the time because my dad would complain and tell me how much I don't care about my bike if I just threw it on the ground and laid it flat, right? So I would use the kickstand, right? So here's this bicycle, all right? So I have that. That's part of my life. I think, oh, that's like a kickstand. Here's like the main structure. This thing is holding it up, right? So these are all things that I think about, you know, and I could do this diagram even before I start drawing the figure. Now, what normally happens is when I go to draw the figure, this is all stuff that at this point in time is in my head. Believe it or not, all of this craziness is going on in my mind while I'm drawing the figure. But when you're starting off and you're learning how to draw, I highly recommend doing this, you know, figure it all out. What are you after, right? create your diagrams, like solve these things. Here I'm like, oh, he's really dropping that shoulder down. His, you know, it's hanging, right? Sorry, H-A-N-G-E. I want hanging in there, right? So I'm thinking of, um, again, words to describe what's going to happen. And then that allows me, you know, that allows me to then draw the model. And when I draw the model, um, I try and do that through the act of, um, of using those ideas, all of those ideas, right? So I want that pushing up. I want this drop in weight. I want that weight to sweep over here, all right? It's gonna S, it, he's Sing himself in here like this, all right? I wanna think about this strong hip. I wanna think about the strength of this leg coming down. It's a very straight leg that's sweeping down like this to get to here, all right? I want that power, right? I definitely want that power. I want this kickstand leg. I don't have to get into all the details right now. I just wanna understand that this is how this is all going to work, right? You see? So I'm drawing for all of the function that I just understood, right? We've got his hand over here, which is bigger. We've got how it, it's rhythmically moves over there, his head's over here. This is a very quick sketch, as you can see. But I'm using all those ideas to get me to this place, right? So that's what we're talking about today. Um, it's understanding ideas, right? Understanding ideas, how do you visualize those ideas to finally get you into your drawing and have these ideas start showing up in your work. Somebody who comes along right now or even comes into this session today, like right now is just gonna come in on this conversation and would have missed everything that it took for me to get to this place, right? And now you guys have seen, this is what goes on in our head. There are all these comparisons. There are the idea of arrow, arrows. There are There is gravity and how things work, right? And then that is what starts to show up into the drawings themselves, okay? All right, that's my end of today. Um, I'm gonna pass it off to, I believe, Mertunje next, right? Yeah. <clears throat> all right, let me get you set up here. All right, it's all yours, Mertunje. All right. So a lot of problem. we got some problems here to solve, right? <laughs> I mean, I have some figures, we're gonna be solving them. Uh, let's see, so there are many, many ways you can solve, right? The first thing is always, I, I think that that analy uh, analysis part that Mike actually showed, that actually happens within quick seconds, okay? Like for example, you're searching for the poses and uh, you like a particular pose and why do you like it? Okay, I think that was the reason because uh, there's something that 
something relatable that comes to your mind is like, oh, look at that pose, right? And it's very dynamic. I can compare it to that and you know, this kind of thing. So that analysis could happen like really, really quickly, okay? All you have to do is just get it out. You know, just like uh, Mike took the time and, you know, make a diagram of, of that like particular figure and just really figuring out like, okay, how this creative metaphor is gonna be looking like, okay? So once you do that, now there's um, many ways to um, take start like those processes, okay? Um, okay, so we're gonna be uh, doing that, let's see. So uh, we have this figure, okay, this, uh, this really amazing pose here. Let's try to solve it. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Uh, so first of all, again, it's, uh, it's kind of like very amazing, you know, uh, because of all the, the pressure that um, the figure, like he's able to balance off with that hand. And look at the, I'm just gonna zoom here a little bit. Look at the weight, okay, <laughs> in, the, in the hand in there. I mean, uh, if that hand would not be there, like the figure won't be able to balance uh, himself, right? He's going to be falling over to the floor. Uh, now, there are see many things that I can figure out, but usually what I start with is a very quick and a small sketch. I know, you know, we uh, actually encourage students to like draw big, but when it comes to like figuring out stuff, what do I usually like to do is uh, start off with a small sketch, you know, trying to like um, solve the problem. Okay? A, th a thumbnail. Yes. Yeah, a thumbnail. Uh, thank you. So um, it, it allows me not to like focus on the details. And I think the thought um, that is related to it is like drawing small thing big, okay? So you're drawing small, you're not focusing on the details, but you're thinking uh, for the big ideas, okay? Which, uh, which we teach as like hierarchy, okay? Now, let's try to do a small, um, you know, like a small thumbnail for this one. I'm gonna have to like figure it out the first thing. I'm just gonna take like a, orange color here because I'm like setting a renaissance mood here today. <laughs> I'm not sure why. Uh, okay, so what he's doing, right? And I want, I also want to keep it quick, you know, because thumbnails are quicker. You don't need to like focus like too hard on it. You don't need to like perfect it out because you need to like get your ideas out, okay? So I'm just thinking, oh, there's a bend that's happening. I usually start with the arrows, okay? <laughs> just like Mike mentioned, you know, I am like, because uh, we are directing energy, it makes sense, okay? You're using arrows into directing those energies. So he's uh, he's bending in here, right? I see I see this rhythm going on. Now here I have to like figure out the template. Oh, what is what the template is? Is it a C or an S? Uh, let's try it out, hmm? let's, let's see. And because this is a small thumbnail, it would allow me to, um, you know, allow me to like solve all those problems. Let's try it out. I'll try one really, really quickly here. Oh, actually the form is going this way. See, that is it, right? <laughs> I'm just like uh, figuring out, studying the pose rather than just focusing on the details and perfecting it out, right? Not, not perfecting it out, okay? So that like goes there. See like the form of it kind of goes this way. Hmm. Look at the rib cage, you know, that's kind of poking out. So these are small excuses that I can use afterwards to kind of, like do these um, separate studies. I really like those separate studies, you know, just like uh, in the Leonardo da Vinci sketchbooks. Uh, I would like to like take those small parts and try to study them a little bit. So we're gonna be doing that okay, for sure. Uh, but this is a small thumbnail, so let's um, just quickly, quickly do it. Okay, so here's the edge of the body. Here you see like the traps, how it's um, getting like, um, getting pushed up, you know, like this way. Uh, okay, and then obviously this is a very important part. I kind of like, because I'm talking, so I can forget about it, but this is a very important part by the way, okay? You need to like get this hand out without which the figure won't be able to balance himself. I'm just like putting a quick cylinder here, not focusing too much on anatomy, just quickly like uh, using shapes to design it out, okay? So this is very, very, very important. Okay, so... I think that that's kind of that's kind of I I kind of like it you know, the the template that I'm I'm using here, and uh, look here what's happening the other hand is kind of hidden okay so the thumbnail allowing my, me not to like focus on the details but I'm drawing through it okay so it's like this is again uh, the way to problem solve you don't uh, don't ignore the parts which are overlapped okay actually try to draw it so. 
If I try to draw with the blue here really quickly, just to show you, so the hand will go here. See, it can, uh, it, it can go a little bit like this and can come here and then it can do this, this pose here. You see, like I'm zooming it in, see that hand pose. Uh, and it's also having a negative space between the, the leg and the hand itself. So let's try to do that. So here I'm thinking, see, I'm thinking like the hand is uh, behaving behind the body, like, like the arm is behaving behind the body. And then here's my, um, you know, here's my hand. Let's see what's happening. Uh, I'm not able to get the full sense of it because I'm first of all, I'm drawing quickly. I'm drawing with the bold brush here. Uh, I think that's what you would do when you're doing traditionally because you're having these, uh, you'll be drawing with the Lyra stick or maybe um, like the side of the pencil and an overhand grip. You don't really get to like focus on those small things. What I can do now, uh, oh, by the way, I can, I can actually take this pose and I can do multiple iterations of it if I'm not like satisfied with the, um, if I'm not satisfied with the template that I use or the function that I put in, okay? So I can obviously do that. I think the hand is a little bit bigger here, but um, we'll try to fix that, okay? So here's my little thumbnail sketch, you know, that we did here. Now we can actually um, keep this in the center here. I try to like focus on the small things here, okay? So let's focus on that hand. I really like the, the hand poses here. I think uh, one of you mentioned in chat, they <laughs> like to draw hands. I love drawing hands myself. Let's do a um, separate uh, call out to that, okay? So here, because I, I'm trying to problem solve, uh, I'm trying to like solve a problem there. Look at the hand, it's it's uh, like, this is the base here, for example, and the hand is doing this, okay? But we are looking at it from the back. So we like to like figure out how the fingers are actually working, you know, how, he's, how the fingers are supporting the weight of the finger. Uh, and that should be evident in your, line quality, okay? It should look like the pressure has been applied there. Okay, so let's, uh, now see, it's giving me much more, um, it's I'm just like focusing on the hand, so it's giving me much more opportunities to um, to solve it. Okay. okay, so right there, now this is the force of the hand, first force of the thumb, I mean, okay? And I really want to like push it hard. You see, my, my, my line goes like really, really hard in there. I like that. And then I can go with this structure of the hand here. If I'm not happy with it, I can go with another shot. Okay, so don't worry. And you can compose that everything in here. The hand would be squashing here a little bit. This is, this is the thumb muscle, by the way. Okay, really, really round and form. I like that. See, now I'm, I'm really just focusing on the hand and try to like figure out you know, different stuff about it. Okay, so it, it will kind of go like that. Now I'll try, have to like talk about the finger here for sure. So these are the forces of the finger. See, kind of like that, okay. So see, uh, that um, that is giving me like more and more opportunity to um, figure that out, to like study the hand itself. I, I can uh, I can do all sorts of studies in here. I can do a perspective study. I can break it down and say, oh, look at the, the thumb in there. And this was the side. I don't have to raise a little bit. It's kind of like a little bit more dirty, uh, more messy, I mean. So we can make it clear and say, oh, here's the side, right? Here's the front. Uh, and see how the nail is like actually fitting. Like, I see again, not a great portion, like, the size is super small, so it's not giving me a portion to do that. Now I can take the thumb in, okay? So I'm even uh, figuring out more stuff because I'm curious about it. You know, that the, the, the thing is, I'm really curious about that hand and how that hand is actually working. Right? I'm going to be taking off this part here and let's try to zoom in a little bit. Let's try to study. Now here, see, uh, I'm drawing hands from a long time. So you might be thinking, oh, how is at a very small image, you know, how are you actually figuring it out? By the way, this is a study, okay? So I have this uh, image on my other screen here. So you know, I'm, I'm watching it a little bit, you know? but the thing is, oh, that, um, you know, so you have to do that. And I'm like studying the things, okay, see right there. And look at the, look at the nail there. I can, I can say it's, it's almost like this. See how deep, how uh, detailed I got there. It's kind of like that. 
and that is it you know so that is my final solution for for this this game right here now this is just one thing okay i can write my notes here if i want uh using these uh, using this animator notes i can and write down the notes and say oh okay. whatever you know, it's, it could be like the thumb is bearing the weight or something like that right here it B A A R I G bring the weight or whatever you know if uh, let's say you're using some creative metaphor just like Mike use you can talk about that right how that system actually works if it's like a pulley system uh, I think uh, Mike showed one of the students work like he's actually building that pulley system over the model so you can write about it okay and say oh how that system actually works like uh, you see that example of a Roman column, okay, that all the strength is in there. So write it down, okay, the strength is in the pillar. This will uh, remind you of that and it will, you know, I think this is just a great way to fill your sketchbooks, <laughs> you know, this is what I like. Uh, writing and drawing at the same time, you know? you're figuring out, see, it's like having no downside. It's benefits and benefits and benefits. You're studying, okay, you are uh, filling your sketchbooks, you are writing it down so you can read it. <laughs> Yeah, you know, and you can like refresh your experiences of that particular place where you did the sketch or maybe a study that you did, you know, things like that. So I can write it down. I can just like fill in the whole, um, uh, fill in this like, you know, like the whole page. Now I can figure out this hand if I wanted to. So I can, I can go in and say, oh, here it is. Here's the other, here's the pinky side of things. It's kind of like that. See, here's a general shape. And uh, <clears throat> here's a wrist. The thumb is on the other side, so I'm, I'm kind of like running out of space there. So I'm just going to be sticking up with this. This is how it goes, right? So a little bit more detailed study. I can I can spend more time and just um, work on it. Okay. Oh, by the way, I, I forget the leg here. I can quickly, quickly ID that out. Okay. It's very shapey, by the way. No, very, very quick, very, very shapey. Here's the um, here's the bottom side. I like that. Now I can take the foot. I can even take uh, the muscles. Okay, so I can say I want to study like this part here. Um, <clears throat> so here's here's the traps. You know, here we we can see the traps muscle in here. How it's like coming up like this, and uh, here would be the scapula. Here, so here, here. See, I'm studying muscles now. If I, if I wanted to, kind of like that. And here's the traps. It's coming out like this. The, this is the diamond that's forming up in here. Kind of like this. Kind of like that. Right? So I can do like a muscle study in here if I want. Okay. Understand the structure. You can actually simplify this structure out. You can say, oh, this, uh, this hand is actually coming out like this. So this is like a, um, you know, like a box, simple box. And write it down, you know. So, isn't that amazing? I mean, uh, why doesn't feel exciting? Like somebody would say, it's not exciting to me. I was like, what? No, it is very, very exciting. Just to like figure out the problems. All right, I'm gonna have to give Swenly some time. So you know, he would be sharing some of his great insights. And I think, uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed. You know? So hope hopefully you get something out of this. Uh, out of my part. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Thanks. Jay. All right, welcome. Okay, let's see. I have the power now. Oh yeah, I do. Yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> so before doing any drawing, you know, I created this, uh, uh, these like uh, visuals because of something that kept coming up a lot during mentorship and I also observe from the discord and that is drawing being such like a burden for students you know some even had mentioned that they want to draw but then they think about how bad the drawing is going to look like so that's demotivates them and they end up procrastinating and not doing any drawing and I kept bringing this up you know and the thing that you really need to do is to move drawing, you know, and the, the shift that needs to occur in your mind, let me say it like this, is 
for most students, drawing is over here on their goal. Like that's that's the goal for them. I have to make a good or a beautiful looking drawing. And the shift that needs to happen is that drawing needs to go from there to here. You know, drawing is the medium or the means to an end. And that goal is like we showed you today is to draw ideas, you know? So think of drawing more like a verb, you know, the act of drawing to uh, solve a problem, which is presenting your ideas. Like um, the solutions are ideas, you know, it takes creativity and also curiosity to, to solve problems and presents multiple solutions in the form of ideas. You know, when you're doing any kind of creative work, this is what clients are paying you for, actually. They want solutions. You know, when you get a briefing for a character design, that's a problem. The client comes to you with a problem. I have this idea for a character. I cannot draw it. I need you to do it for me. And they're paying you for your solutions in the form of different ideas. So this is the main thing that I want to give you guys, today, you know, to kind of like summarize um, a lot of the stuff that we mentioned. Uh, let's do a quick demo here. Let's see, I'm already on a new layer. So similar to what Mitsunje did, I'm just going to do a quick analysis of this pose. You know, so before I even start drawing, I look at the figure and I already have ideas going through my mind. Like she's leaning her whole body forward. Um, the weight is mostly on. Uh, her left leg, you know, you can see all this, the tension, especially on her lower leg. And notice all the skin wrinkling in that foot and all the weights on that foot. So the things that I'm thinking about, that's what I want to draw. You know, so I'm not thinking about creating a good drawing. I'm using drawing to present my ideas about a figure on the page. You know, so let's start with, let's start with the torso here. Like all the weight is like hanging down here in the pelvis. You now I can use her clothes. It's actually giving me a uh, good structure. Now I can see there is a twist, like a chest is facing us. And we can see a little bit of, of the, the center line of the back right here. You now, so if we compare this to a box, you know, we would have the front plane of the box and this would quickly like go there and here we would see a bit of the of the back plane you know so notice that i'm drawing to to help me understand the figure you know, so this leg is coming out right here and i can see all all the tension you know a lot of tension on this leg i want to make sure that this leg has a lot of weights you know so i'm darkening the line you know, and I'm drawing with force form and shape simultaneously, by the way. Let's see. So this is all hanging. Now I can use, I could use some wrapping in here to help me see the direction of the thigh. Same for the lower leg. Now I can go to this other leg and it looks like it's, it's dragging behind. You know, it's not as, as tense as the other one. So it's like dragging behind here. And it has, it's very fluid to me, you know? So I approach the drawing with that idea in mind, you know? And those ideas affect the type of line that I use. Okay, the line is my language. You know, so I'm checking the placements and maybe this foot needs to be just a bit lower. So it feels like it's on the same ground plane. You know, the lifted leg or the dragging leg is putting a bit more like contraction in this gluteus here. This one is more relaxed and stretched. And I can see the shoulder is slightly lifted and the hands, the arm, I should say, is like hanging here. She has her hands out there. You know, so super simple. This is just my, my first pass at the drawing. Now we have the other hands. Now I don't even need to get into details like like the fingers at this point now in her head she's looking up 
Okay. So be aware that the head is, is rigid, you know, so whatever the head does, the neck has to make that a action happen. You know, I often see students, the head is looking up, but yet they draw the neck bending down and that doesn't work, of course, you know, so keep that in mind. So she's looking up. I can look at her top here, which also helps me see the form. You know, and the more information I have on the page, I can start comparing. You know, like I look at I look at the negative shape here and I look at it on the photo, and I can see that her, her leg sticks out a bit more. So what's the distance from here to here? You know, so I'm using I'm using shape to help me see that. Okay, so this is a good first pass. So now what we could do is I could, and especially if you're starting out with force, explore the different templates. Like I use the front to front here for the leg. It works as one curve. But what if that leg was front to back? Well, let me draw it here. Let's see what happens. So similar to what Mitsunji did, I'm just going to just going to draw that leg here. And let's say the leg is working front to front. So here is where it would attach into the pelvis and the sockets. Now make sure we get the, all the weight on that foot. Now get some wrapping lines in here for form. And now I can compare it to the reference. Well, which one shows me what the model is doing? Well, with this one, I can see that I'm missing like the, the strong curve and all the tension that is on the front of her leg, the lower leg that is because of all the weight. You know, if you look at the reference, you can see like all the weight, you know, that is on, on the shin. So now I have the two possible solutions and I can see, well, this doesn't represent what she's doing, you know, but I explored it, you know, it's good to, Again, especially when you're starting out with force, explore all the options. And even nowadays, I mean, it's not always perfectly obvious to me, you know, what template shows the action the best. So I give myself the opportunity to explore. Same for this leg. I use front to back here, but what if the leg, what if it was front to front? You know, does that show the action uh, better? So here would be, it would be the knee joints. This would be the ankle, and we have the heel back here, and we have this like, dragging foot. You know, I can see that we barely see the back plane of that leg. You know, we see we see mostly the sides. Uh, the knee is sticking out here. And then we have the calf, you know, sitting on the back plane of that simple cylinder. Well, and again. Now I have this idea down and I compare it to the picture. Well, don't see as strong as an arc at the front of this, of this leg compared to the other one. You know, so based on that, I think that, you know, this front to back rhythm shows the action of the leg the best, you know? And so you can do it with the rest of the, of the figure, you know, draw to explore and figure things out. And this is the fastest way to learn instead of just doing one drawing and, and that's it. Okay, I see it's time. So yeah, hopefully the tools we presented you guys with today um, helps you to shift your mind about drawing and make it something uh, fun, you know, and something that uh, excites your curiosity instead of it being a burden. Let me stop the share. All right, thank you, Swindley. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, I loved your intro. Um, the idea of you know jobs, right? Like in closing, to Swenley's point, what I want you guys to leave with uh, today that was asked in the uh, chat, you know, like what's the point here? The point is, you know, for us on just the figure drawing end, as you can see, as I wrote here in the bottom, your figure drawing is a visual representation of your problem solving, right? It's your ideas. That's what you're really trying to do, and we want to show you that 
It doesn't only have to be line. It can be writing. It could be arrows. It could be diagrammatic. You can create your own flow charts to like figure things out, whatever it takes for you to understand, right? For you to get to a way that you solve problems, right? You think about it in the world of math, it's pretty darn obvious, right? It's like you're using numbers and there's tools um, like the plus sign and the minus sign, right? There's symbols and those symbols have meaning, right? That suddenly change the way the numbers interact with one another, right? And here we're saying that the use of words, the use of arrows, all of a sudden they, they already have meaning within them and you're combining that with you drawing. So how does that help you better understand what's going on, right? Um, and to get back to Swenley's point, that's really what we're all getting paid for. You guys come to us, first of all, because the problem we solve for you is how to draw, right? To learn how to draw better. And we're sharing with you every week some of the things that we use to help you do that. Someday, if you're interested in making money, you know, supporting yourself through an art career, you will be solving other problems. That's what makes the world go around. We're all just trying to solve each other's problems, <laughs> okay? That's really what's happening, okay? So, uh, you know, I tried to jot down this quick list as an overview of today. Uh, arrows, we talked about arrows, we talked about writing. We talked about the idea of drawing other things, right, to solve problems. So it could be comparisons, you know, comparisons help you think potentially big or small, depending on what you're looking at. And last but not least, these, what I'm calling isolation sketches, as we saw with Michelangelo's drawing of the foot and then drawing the big toe, right, like going in and zooming in doing a more microscopic view of a particular area to solve the problem. The more you zoom, zoom in or out of an object says hierarchically at what stage is that problem solving, right? If you draw the whole figure, you're solving the whole figure. You go into the toe, you're trying to you know, solve the toe region of the foot. What does that look like, right? So size relates to the size, the size of the drawing relates to the size of the problem, okay? All right, so we leave you with that for this weekend. Um, go out there and draw and solve the understanding of what the model is doing through writing and arrows, comparisons, um, you know, metaphors and so on, and do some of that isolation, isolation sketching to figure things out and recognize that while you're doing that, you are drawing and thinking, you're drawing and trying to solve problems, okay? All right, everyone, thank you again, Swanley Mertunje, for all your support and great advice today. Uh, thank you everyone else for coming again. If you enjoy what we're doing, please hit the subscribe button and uh, hit the bell if you want to be notified to stay on track with us every Friday. And uh, we will be seeing you next week again, next Friday with another Force Friday session. Take care, everyone, and goodbye. Bye. See you guys. Bye bye. See ya. All righty, it's all closed down. So that was good.